uh we do apologize for the network issue of course these are things that we don't have control over good morning uche and welcome to people of the east the floor is open beer friends are waiting it's all yours please go ahead good morning first how are you doing this morning i'm all right i cannot complain and i hope you are good i'm good i'm good um i know can you hear me clearly because i'm loud I and clear out. loud and clear and humanity is listening go ahead my dear okay great so i you know i know that we had discussed me coming back on your show to um just talk about some stuff in general that i see and another reason why um I liked doing your show last time was I felt that people um, that follow me or that follow me on social media, they got a chance to know me better. So that's why I am, you know, I'm happy to be back this morning, um, hopefully to achieve the same goal. So I liked, one thing about me is I really, really like to address um, people's concerns and questions. I do a lot of that. So those of you that follow me on Twitter, best believe that I do read um, all of your tweets. I try to go through all of my messages um, as much as, you know, as many messages I get um, to go through them and address some of your needs. Um, one thing that has come up a lot is questions regarding um the whole idea of not idea but the goal of biafra um i do have a lot of friends that are um, not just Igbo, but from different ethnic groups and recently surprisingly a lot of um my different friends from different ethnic groups that are currently living in nigeria they had you know they reached out to me and they said um hey carolyn you know this whole Biafra thing, we want to be a part of it. And it is very, very shocking to me because I've gotten so much overwhelming um, support from different ethnic groups. And they asked me, they, they, the one thing they asked me, they said, you know what, I, I want to be a part of Biafra, um, you know, but I'm not Igbo. And I let them know that, you know, Biafra is not just... Um, it's not just for Evos, but it represents freedom. And I encourage them and I encourage my friends that are in, in different ethnic groups to understand that Biafra is freedom. So in the sense that, you know, once we get Biafra, we will be able to actually stabilize a country where people are not, you know, oppressed, um, People can grow financially. People can have basic, um, um, basic things of life, of everyday life. And I just want to encourage other people that are um, going through the atrocities and the sadness in Nigeria, not just the East, but to know that we're pushing for something that's going to um, basically provide freedom and access to so much things for so many people and i encourage people not only to join that join this movement movement but really really be a part of it because again it's it's not just for us it's for for everyone and i feel like once we get to the afra you will see so many things change can you hear me uche i can hear you loud and clear please go ahead Okay, so no, I want you. I want you to. You can also talk. All right. Uh, yes, so, I, I, I just. I, I just want you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to lay it down, to lay it on the table, explore all our venue, and of course, I will come in. I want you to really take us extensively about the whole gold Biafra. All right, and then of course, I will come in, and then we can drive it home. Go ahead, please. Right. So, um, so that's pretty much my job here in the United States because the problem is is that people people see people hear Biafra and they're they're scared of oh my gosh they're scared of secession and a sovereignty of a new republic but I'm I'm a very big advocate on instead of people trying to um, rebuild you know this whole one Nigeria they said you know we can 
you know, Nigeria, we can still fix it. And in my head, which I always give the analogy that you can't fix a house that, like, let's say you have a house that has mold in it and you want to make that house look presentable. You start to paint the mold on top of it with white paint. Even though you paint the house, you're still going to have mold in it. And that's the same way with Nigeria. There's no way that you can fix a country that is that's been so much entangled with corruption so for me in order for someone trying to fix something you have to build new and that's the idea and the goal of what we're trying to do with the republic of the afra all right so uh uche i just want to i just want to chip in something here quickly and of course i will allow you to continue there um you spoke about when people hear Biafra, what comes to their mind is that, oh, cessation, or oh, they want to start a new country, and what have you. Now, don't you think perhaps it's because we need to do more in times, in terms of evangelism, because that's what we call it, you know, and when I say in evangelism, I mean engaging the people, because people need to understand what we're all about. Whenever our leader goes on air, he tries to explain to people the kind of nation Biafra will be, and the reason why he's doing that is to calm the nerves of the international community, so that they don't, they don't think that, okay, Biafra is going to be another Sudan, another others, and that. So, don't you think it's because we need to do more in terms of telling people, talking to people, you know, what Biafra is all about and why we want Biafra? Please continue. No, exactly. And so, so exactly. So I think we're getting to the point because I myself, just like other, like other Biafrans and other people, I, I feel like, you know, the goal is getting closer. You're getting to the point where, you have to start laying the foundation for people. And that's one of my goals that I'm trying to do. Even when I speak to people here in the U S I try to lay down that foundation to let them know this is what the Republic of the Afro will look like. And this is what this Republic will provide. I think it's very important for you to, um, evangelize on how and what Biafra would look like. So people could understand why why we need it more now and now you know so it is it's very important to advent you know it's very important to talk about it with other people so that way they can get a sense of understanding and like you said a lot of people's anxieties and tensions could kind of be a little not a little bit but really really relaxed in a sense because we're we're trying to give people access to something that they've never had before so you know, when I think of Biafra, I think of a republic that's more modern, that, you know, people can exercise their fundamental rights, where you're not scared of your own um, police and army force, right? Where the government is um, providing light, minimum wage, um, free schooling to um, um, university through, well, not necessarily university, maybe not university, but free schooling from, I guess you would say, primary to secondary school for, for kids, um, access to a hospital, access to fire departments. And the thing is, it's like, okay, once this republic here is set in stone, you actually bring experts and you bring people in that can help really um, build up an economy that's going to be stable forever, for generations to come and forever, and it will only grow from there. And that's why we that's why it's very, very important that we have to break away from Nigeria, because we don't want any more of that corruption and and just that stigma of, of what that country is. We, we cannot have that um, upon what we're trying to build, because, again, we're doing a 360 from something that they could never do. All right. Which, one more thing again. Also, I want to throw in as we uh, continue. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. All right. What do you actually think is the reason why, um, let me put it this way, the international community, you know, have the have problems, you know, with the issue of Biafra leaving Nigeria? I don't know if their reasons are genuine or is it because of what they are getting in Nigeria? Is there another thing that you think might be the reason why these people, uh, you know, whenever they hear the word uh, Biafra living in Nigeria, you know, there is this jiltering in, in them. 
No, I, so I think, I think the main thing is that people are comfortable, right? Um, people like to exist in their own comfortable zone. So when you look at Nigeria and how much problems that Nigeria has had from the start of the British um, up till now, people are comfortable with just keeping it at, at keeping it where it is. Right. But there's only so much, there's only, there's only, you know, so many times where you can continue to be comfortable in such a very uncomfortable situation. And a lot of countries benefit from Nigeria. They benefit from the whole idea of having a one Nigeria. Now we think about splitting up and, and removing yourself from one Nigeria. You're going to, you know, some of the, some of these countries and companies as well that have heavy stakes in Nigeria, they're going to have to start thinking of, okay, well, if my business is in the east part of Nigeria, I need to start thinking about, you know, how is it going to look like if I do business in Biafra? And um, people have, a lot of countries have gotten away with taking advantage of Nigeria and their resources, but th that's not going to happen, you know, in Biafra. So I think that that's the issue too. It's like, okay, when people are starting to wake up, you know, and they're going to have this new republic, you know, how is that going to benefit us? And, you know, how are we going to, you know, get a piece of that? It, it, in a sense of, you know, they just want to benefit from it. So I think um, that's a discussion that countries are going to have to start looking at, and that's a discussion that's, that's going to start to um, have, you know, if that answers your question. Of course, you did answer my question because uh, there are things that I keep, you know, uh, asking myself. Uh, you know, there are people who came into the struggle thinking that, oh, we're going to get Biafra tomorrow. We're going to get Biafra next week. <laughs> Not knowing that freedom fighting is the most difficult thing that you can do on this earth. Because everything is against you. Everything is working against you. Now, people come in with that belief, you know, that it's just a walk in the park. And when things doesn't go their way, you know, uh, you will see them begin to misbehave and some taking a U-turn and what have you. Now, tell me, how difficult is the struggle? It's very difficult. I've, <laughs> I I'm, I'm happy you um, asked that question because a lot of people, um, when I came into the struggle, I came in last year and just kind of took off from there. But, you know, a lot of people have high expectations from Mazi Namdi Kanu because, you know, he's been doing this, I believe, for over 10 years. And um, you have to think about what you're trying to do. You're not trying to build a house. You're not trying to... Um, you know, build a school or start a business. You're trying to literally break away from one of the top, top corrupt countries in this world. You're literally trying to break away. So when I say you're trying to break away, let that sink inside your head and just think something like that is not going to take a year or two years or three years, right? Um, if you look at stories in the Bibles, you know, some of the stories in the Bible, the greatest stories in the Bible, in the Bible, took years, years. You know, it's not something people always reference the story of Moses a lot with our situation. You know, how long did that take? You know, you have to be very, very realistic with this. And I, and I do believe I, strong, I'm a strong believer of God. I don't hide that. God always has a purpose. So in this instance, so much, so things have occurred last year and so many things are occurring this year. God has a plan and when that time comes, everything is falling in place. I believe right now that everything is falling in place. Other ethnic groups are now agitating for freedom, right? You have the whole In Stars movement that really set off the um, idea of, of, wow, let's start looking into Nigeria. Their human rights violations are out of this world. You know, when I speak to so many um, so many people here in the U.S. that have, you know, power to do something. And they always say, you know, we don't really get a lot of news. We don't really, they always say we don't get a lot of news from, that's coming from Nigeria. The recent, the re sorry, somebody keeps on calling. Okay, so the recent in SARS um, atrocity allowed a lot of countries such as the U.S. to start paying close attention. So once you get, once you get, 
other countries' um, attention, then you start saying, okay, this is not the only thing you need to focus on. So this is right now where we are at within the struggle. It's a beautiful moment. And people need to understand that we've gotten so far. So um, it's gonna. It, it's not a thing that takes overnight, but I can guarantee you that right now, this day, there has been, we're, you know, we're getting much, much closer. All right. You know, uh, what I'm trying to do this morning is very simple. I'm trying to play the devil's advocate. I tell you why. Because when I see people saying things like, oh, Mazin Lambekano, you told us we're going to have Biafra in 2020. So what happened? I mean, I get so upset now because the thing is, it's not really in the hand of Mazin Lambekano to give you Biafra. Do you understand me? Now, it could be in two ways. That's the way I see it. Ultimately, it's in the hand of God to give us Biafra, right? Now, it's also in the hands of international community if they buy into the you know, dream of Biafra. But ultimately, it's in the hand of God to give us Biafra. So, we need to understand. We need to get it clear. Because there is nothing to hide. And our leader, one thing I love about him, he doesn't paint words like telling you no promises, so we're going to get Biafra next month and all this stuff. No, it is hard, people, because it might come to a point that we need to fight our way through it. I'm, I'm just being realistic here. Because at the end of the day, what are you going to do if Nigeria, of course, they've said that, no, you ain't getting Biafra. You need to fight for your freedom. It doesn't matter whatever it takes. And one more thing again, and of course, I will allow you to elaborate on what I'm saying, you know, give more input is this. Now, we need to remove this from our mind, our heart. There is a possibility, you know, that we will get Biafra in our own time. This is our prayers. But if we don't get Biafra in our own time, we have children. We have generations that we don't want to go through what we have gone through. If I don't get Biafra and my son sees Biafra, nothing spoiled. I haven't fought, you know, a useless fight. I fought a noble fight because I created a future for my son. So uh, what's your take on this? Can you please elaborate on that? Very, very important. Yes, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up because it, it makes me so mad as well when I do read comments and say, oh, you know, he said that he was going to, um, you know, that he's going to, bring us Biafra, and Maz, uh, Mazinam he's a vessel, right? God has created him Absolutely. as a vessel. Absolutely. Right. A vessel basically to plant this movement and just to take the throne and, and pretty much surface it. Because, because if you're looking at a country like Nigeria and the corruptness, you have to be very bold to be in a position like him. And people really need to understand that. Let me say that again. You have to be very, very bold to be in a position like him. And it's not easy. I can tell you, like, I mean, obviously, you know, he, um, there's times that I'm with him, you know, we're planning. I can tell you there's times that sleep is not existing. I, we are up planning and doing these things. I mean, I, sometimes I feel sorry for him because I'm like, man, how can you be human? I don't even look at him like a human. And that's just to be honest. That's why that's but why I call I, him I call him abnormal human. Abnormal human because all the attribute is not, way, way, you know, I don't know. Go ahead, please. It's it's, it's not and, and the and the thing is you have to understand somebody like him, he it's like he's pretty much the the voice of his movement. And I'll I'll anybody that's listening to me right now. You can tweet me right now and tell me somebody else that's doing the same thing that he's doing in this capacity. I will wait right now for a minute to see if anybody can point out somebody that's doing it and not only doing it, but doing it without corruption or bribes. That's important. Without corruption or bribes. I don't like to say some of these fallen angels. I don't like to count them out because... I men mentally, I always move forward. I don't like to focus on negativity. But so many people have come into the struggle and they've tried to even touch the idea of a secession, but they failed. Because God will always, anytime your heart is not clean, God will take you out, right? How is it possible that he's able to stand for the um, length of time that he is? How is he able to continue to do the things that he's doing, if he was, if this was a movie, it would probably be like the bestseller because some of the stuff that he's gone through, 
it's not by man, it's by God. And God is very strategic um, into what he does and how he plans people's life. So again, he's one man that God has used. And it's up to us, people like me, people like you to pretty much carry it on, you know, because, at, at, you know, he's still one man, but we all together, we are we are a group, you know, IPOB is the biggest organization that's doing the things that they're doing to, to get this out there, regardless if the Nigerian government is going to prescribe it as a terrorist, because, you know, that's not true. We're the biggest organization doing what we're doing, and we're doing it well. So Mazinamni, again, is the vessel, but we back him behind to what he's doing and we're not you know we have to make sure that he's just not a madman where people are like oh my gosh he's trying to fight for a secession that's crazy it's not crazy it's not crazy at all it's a goal that's going to be achieved and when people see it you know as people are seeing things such as esn and other things that we are doing they're now giving him more respect and the respect that he's um this is the respect that he should have had a long time ago you know, so the more that we are doing things and putting things on the map, people are starting to wake up. All right. I love what you said. Of course, you said if Mazen Lambe Kano was a story, if Mazen Lambe Kano was a movie, I mean, I say it's going to be a blockbuster that I can tell you with all certainty. All right. Moving along, moving along. You know, I'm a realistic. That's the thing about me. I'm a realistic. I try to picture things, you know, the way it is. I know nobody want to hear negative stuff. People believe in this positivity. That is good. That is so well done. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you need to know the truth about things because even the Bible said, who goes on a journey without counting the cost? You need to count the cost of the journey you are about to embark on. If I want to go to the U.S. now, I need to calculate how much is it going to cost me to take on a flight. When I get there, I need to eat. I need to sleep in a hotel. These are the things I need to calculate before I embark on that trip. And if I don't do that, trust me, I'm going to sleep on the street. I probably wouldn't, wouldn't even make it, you know. So the same thing is applicable in this freedom fighting. We all are so expectant expect one man but i'm asking you what have you done as an individual where you are mazen nam the Kano is just there to steer the ship he is just the captain steering the ship he is not just everything because there are crew members remember there are crew members even an aircraft the pilot is there in front driving and everybody else the crew members are there making sure things are in order the same thing is applicable in the struggle now I want to say something, Uche. There is a problem, okay? You know, I, I'm so open. The, 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 the worst you can do is to hate me, and I don't give a damn. People can hate me, but I don't give a damn. I just speak the <laughs> truth. That's just the way it is. Now, there is this thing that our leader told us. I, I've never forgotten it. He says there's something you call the four cardinal disease of a black man. Greed, envy, jealousy. <laughs> And the other one I've forgotten, but let's just hold on to this three. Now, this thing he spoke about is even, I mean, alive, kicking, even in this IPOB of ours. Because it's jealousy, it's envy, it's greed that will make you one day wake up in the morning and tell us, listen, guys, I don't think I'm going to do this Biafran thing anymore. Because you feel that Mazen Lambda Khan is not doing it well, that you can do better. But now, if you understand that there is what you call vision, there is a visionary. That's the person who have the vision. And there are followers, people who bought, people who have subscribed into that vision. If you understand this, you know, scenario, trust me when I tell you, it will help you to understand what you have gotten yourself into. So talk to me about jealousy. Talk to me about greed. Talk to me about envy, Uche. I want to know because okay. this is something that is happening even in our midst as IPOB. Now, as I'm talking on this radio, Uche, uh -huh. there are somebody sitting, somebody sitting in one IPOB family listening to me and he will be like, uh, why would he be this guy all the time? Now, the same person who's telling you that thing doesn't even know how to talk. Number one, he can't even stand one second on a radio if you ask him to do it. But he wants to talk down on you. It is called greed, jealousy, and envy. You need to keep to your lane. That is very simple. And if we don't get it together and understand that we complement each other, 
we are not going anywhere until we understand that Uche is helping our leader as his PA and I am broadcasting on the radio and the DOS has their you know the head the head of the DOS and we have coordinators we have national coordinators and reps all around the world and all this position complement each other and makes Mazinam the Khan's job very easy not when you are a coordinator then you begin to think that you know better that you can lead the struggle please go ahead Uche you know what I when you said that I'm just in so much awe because I've actually been um, feeling the same way too and I'm so happy that you brought that up um, for the several reasons is that and I'm gonna say this very clearly and very slowly jealousy is only going to hold back what we're trying to do so the thing that I try to tell people and some and some you know it's we are all in this together my position is no higher than what you're doing and I do believe that right um, I've never I never said oh you know hey I really really want this position if you know me I'm very very private person believe it or not you know, I had to pretty much get outside of my comfort zone in order for me to do this. And people need to understand that Mazi Namdi, again, he's the vessel of this organization, but um, everybody needs to be and move like him. We're trying to get a goal. And the crazy thing is that I know a lot of people are like, let me do this and let me do this because when Biafra comes, I want a political appointment enough of that if you start thinking like that then you you lost what we're trying to do because it's not about political poll appointment or who's getting this or who's getting that it's about people getting freedom people are dying every day there's no time to be jealous any type of spirit of jealousy that is embedded in your soul i pray right now that god will remove it you see because the people the people that are jealous you're only going to be a blockage to what we're trying to do you know, once I told myself, I said, once Biafra comes, anything that I've worked hard in America, I want to build something and give it to our people. If you know me, if anybody knows me, I care so much. I give things away because what we have on this earth, and remember this, let me say it again. What we have on this earth is temporary, right? What we are doing is giving glory ultimately to God because God is basically allowing us to build up a republic for generations to come. So don't think of, don't have that mindset of jealousy when you're doing something. That is not okay. Everybody, if you're an IPOB from different countries, especially in Nigeria, you guys are the most crucial piece. There's certain stuff that I hear that I'm not gonna state on the radio um, that happens within our members, but I get so upset. So I'm gonna say it right now, although yes, I'm young, a lot of people are older than me, um, a lot of the senior um, commanders and stuff, yes. But things that are happening on the ground, and I'm going to say it very clearly, enough is enough. You know what I mean? Enough is enough. I've heard things that go on, and I've, I've you know, by eyewitnesses, I hear things all the time. Enough is enough. If you cannot play your position in a way that is going to be fair for other members or, or, um, walk towards the ultimate goal of freedom, then, then remove yourself from the organization. Remove yourself. There should be no inside briberies. There should be nothing like that. And anybody, and I want to say this again, I don't want to say, say this too, anybody that is in, um, that is in the East, that, that's in Biafra right now, um, and you just have that idea of today, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and just blow our cover. I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, give it all away and, and just be a Sabbath watch. Think twice, right? Because when you're doing that, let me tell you something. God is real. God is real and Biafra is a spirit. So what you're doing, you're disrespecting your ancestors that died many years for what we're trying to do. So if your spirit doesn't, if, the, if that does not sit in your spirit alone and you don't fear that, then you're not human. You're not human. You know what I mean? And I pray right now that when people are listening, if your heart is not clean, leave. We don't need that. We don't need that. Change your mentality. If we all work together on the same page, we will move accordingly. 
Hashtag we move. That's that's what we move means. I love that. We move on one accord, one unit, and, and that's how we walk. I so love again, that. if anybody is trailing, trailing and dragging us down with jealousy and sabotage, move away. So many people right now that are on Facebook, they the sabotage. They're so angry and so jealous. They try every day to to make up these fake conspiracies of Mazi Namdi and just other principal officers in Nigeria. It's not working. I laugh when I see stuff like that because when I see people um, jealous, putting tweets and and putting stuff on Facebook, I know that God is moving. When you get closer to something, your enemy is only going to get stronger, and God will continue to um, cut them down. The enemy will always lose. When your heart is clean, the enemy will always, always lose. So again, those of you who are jealous, change your mindset. You know, this is for everyone. This is for everyone. All right, if you are listening to me this morning, it is Radio Biafra Sadek. We are the people of the East, and I can tell you right now, the roof is on fire. And it's not me, it's Uche. <laughs> Uche is putting the roof on fire, and I must tell you, there is no water, and we don't even need no water to calm everything down, because that's what we knew. Hashtag, we move together. My goodness me. All right. We are moving so fast this morning. And I can tell you, you know, I made a statement here while we were talking. You know, I said that if we don't get Biafra now, of course, we have tried for our children to get it. Somebody said something on Facebook. And I said that thing purposely to get you, you know, agitated, to get you upset. Because the thing is, when Mazen Lam, kind of comes on radio and said, we are getting Biafra next year. You know what people don't understand? He is not saying it because Mazen Lam, they can have some supernatural power that he's going to do some abracadabra and Biafra will appear. No, he is saying it so that you can help him. If you don't help him, Biafra will not come. Alone, Mazen Amdekano cannot give you Biafra. Yes, we said it is in the hand of God to give us Biafra. God help those who help themselves. If God look at us, now all we do is sabotaging one another. All we do is gossip, greed, jealousy, envy. Why on earth will God help such a people? It's highly impossible. Now, if you look in the Bible... The book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 31. All right, let me see. Uche, are you still there with me? Uche, are you still there with me? Uche, are you still there? All right, I need to make sure that I still have our sister on the line. My goodness me. Uche, are you still there? No. I think I've lost... Our sister, I've lost. Let me see. I think she's trying to call me back. Let's get the call. Uche, can you hear me now? Yep. All right, Sorry, thank I you. All right, I lost you for one Go second. Ahead. Stay with me, Uche. Stay with me. I don't want to lose you because it's getting hotter. And I'm kind of enjoying this discussion because this is the matter, matter of the moment. So, in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verse 31 to 33, Korah, I don't know if you've heard that name before in the Old Testament, Korah led a revolt against Moses. But he died along with all his co-conspirators. When God caused the earth to open her mouth and swallowed Korah and Abiram, my goodness me, even Miriam, Moses' sister, joined the conspirator. Moses' sister, Miriam, she joined. Now, do you hear that? The same thing is happening today. Mazen Nam, they can represent Moses. He represents Joshua in our time. And of course, if you sabotage the efforts, remember Biafra is ordained by God. If you try to sabotage the efforts, you will not succeed, but you will die. And not just only you, but with your co-conspirators. It is as simple as that. Now, it was supposed to be a couple of days for the children of Israelite to get to the promised land. But it took them 40 years. Somebody was making fun. He said, if I can see Moses, I need to ask him, what were he doing? <laughs> because I know that from Egypt to Israel is very close. What were he doing 40 years <laughs> to get to Israel? 
It was a joke somebody made. But now, it was not about Moses. Moses does not have the capability to take these people to e e Israel. No, he was just there to navigate. He is the navigator. He was there to navigate them to Israel. God is the one leading them to Israel. The same thing is happening here. Master Namdekano is just a navigator to navigate us to the promised land. The actual person who is taking us to the promised land is God. And the people who's going to make it happen is us. But when we become greedy people jealous of everywhere you know when i started doing this broadcast which you know somebody told me and that advice that the person gave me is actually what was guiding me to today he said to me listen you know when you start broadcasting you're gonna be popular people's gonna be calling your name everywhere but don't let it get into your head and don't uh -huh. expect anything from our people that's what he said don't expect anything because anytime you start expecting praises people to say oh you're doing good you're doing great that is your end and that is how you're gonna fall and when i started this broadcast which i went through a lot my fellow come ready people you know i'm i took oath together ganged up against me level all lies and all manner of allegations against me you know at a point that when i got to israel the coordinator in israel has to call me and say to me listen this, this is what i'm hearing from your people they say that you did one two three i couldn't believe it but at the end of the day i was vindicated you know this is what we are going through in the struggle. People will not do nothing, but they will want to bring you down in that one you are doing. And I call it witchcraft. And I said every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of greed and envy in our midst is going to die. You will not see the promised land. I'm telling you this right now unless you change your ways. So this is what I'm saying, Uche. Moses went through the same thing. And I need people to understand this. That Mazen Nam Dekano is just there to navigate us. And what is holding us back and what is making this journey even longer. Almost looking like 40 years God gave the Israelites to get to the promised land. is because of us. All we do is to find fault. All we do is to do what? Castigate. I mean, constructive, you know. Constructive castigation is welcome, but when you are doing it with the wrong motive and ill motive, that's where the problem is. So, my brother on Facebook who is telling me, you know what he said, um, he has he has Zoma said, you've made your point, buddy, but, uh, but we, need to, we need to do all we can by any means necessary to get Biafra today in our time. That is what I'm talking about. If we don't do it, we are not going to get it. It's as simple as that. Uche, please go ahead. No, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. And the thing is, it's like when you are doing something in this capacity, in this capacity, everyone is looking, people are looking to see if there's any holes, right? Because so many holes would lead to falling, but because we're so strong and there's more good than bad, we're still able to sustain what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I'm sorry that you, you had to experience that because our people should not be our biggest enemy. They should be our biggest um, cheers. They should be our biggest motivators, you know, because the, what you're doing, you're still taking time out for yourself. And, and let me ask you this question. So let me turn it around and ask you, are you getting paid to do this radio show? I mean, just ask you, do you get paid in any way to do this? No, it's, it's, it's a free will. It's something we do out of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because the other day I I had a comment on Twitter. They said, oh, I know why uh, Mazi Namdi picked her um, other than the, um, other than that she gets a good salary. And I want to let people know today, tomorrow and the next day, I work solely for free for IPOB and, and Mazi Namdi Kano. I do not get paid. And if you want to take it a step further, I'm an attorney. Some people do not know. I quit my job in December. I, I prayed about it. I quit my job in December because I started my own firm so I would be able to manage my own time and do what I'm doing in the struggle. Because I prayed. I said, God, show me my purpose. And God basically cleared it out for me. He's like, you can't work for somebody else doing what you're doing. Rather, you can work for yourself and be able to manage your own time. And that's just how it is. 
you know, you, I make sacrifices, you know, it's not easy every day. Like you and I and other people that are in the struggle, we make sacrifices. It's not an easy thing right now. It is 3:28 AM here in the United States. It is early. You know, we make sacrifices, but if I don't make these sacrifices, I don't believe in what we're doing. If I don't make these sacrifices, we won't be able to achieve what we're doing faster. And the way that I'm moving, the way that you're moving, everybody that's t- that is under oath, that is going to be under oath, should be moving in that same direction. That same fire that is burning in me to wake up at 3 a.m. to do this show, um, to do other things that I'm doing, that same fire should be burning in you. If you are serious about what we're doing, you truly believe in it. You know what I mean? You will rise up and you will create a platform for yourself. And people need to stop waiting for Mazi Namdi to um, tell them what to do. Rather, just do it. Just do it. Anything that is going to help, just do it. So that's why I like. That's why I want to encourage people. You know, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. You know, and there's no. I know I'm not. Again, I'm not getting paid because a lot of people ask me that. I'm like, ha ha ha. No, it's <laughs> for free. Absolutely. Free, free, free. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Which, which, uh, you know, I, you know, I hate the fact that you know the time difference is such a very bad one that I have to keep you up every morning, and that is, uh, you know, on a September. But of course, what can we do? We need to do this job because I want you on air, Uche, every week. I want you on air with me every week, and we can make it a Thursday thing unless something comes up. We can shift it around, you know, just to get an update on what is happening. Talk to our people, and when it comes to this struggle all right if you are listening once again uh it is radio biafra we are the people of the east don't get it twisted because this is who we are in case you don't know and if you don't know let me explain it to you the wise men they came from the east that's right and of course the sun as you know it rises from the east and that makes us the people of the east the wisest brain of them all mazinam the Kano, he also comes from the east this is breakfast is with Marcy K. Jones on the on people of the East of Joyce the interaction in now. All right, it is breakfast with Marcy K. Jones on the people of the East, and I'm kind of, you know begging you if i have to go on my knees trust me i will do that and i want you to join the interaction now because here on this platform the university of radio biafra is where we worship elohim and of course it is the university like none other you cannot find a university like this anywhere in the on the earth and we have the greatest chancellor of them all he is the one presiding over this university i'm talking about none other than mazin nam the uche are we let's start bringing it home and let's start wrapping it up now i made an example i said that the children of israelite were supposed to get to egypt you know in a couple of days but because of their stubbornness because of their you know heart, heart hardened god actually made it that they should get there for 40 years now our people don't understand why it's taking us long we need to refine ourselves we need to look into ourselves we need to purge ourselves from all this envy jealousy and all this evil character before god can look back and say you know what i have heard the people i have heard rather the cry of my people in biafra and i have decided to come down from heaven and save them from their oppressors go ahead uche no, I agree. Um, and I just, I, I think that the story in the Bible relates to so much what we're doing. And it's so, so, so powerful. Um, and you have to understand that story is, it pretty much sets a tone to what we're doing. So those of us that are walking accordingly to one group, moving in that same direction, we have to continue to encourage each other that, yes, yes, it is, it's hard. If I, again, I cannot lie to you to tell you how many times I cry. I don't, currently right now, I don't feel comfortable laying down in America with my privilege and why people are suffering. It does not, it, it does not work for me. There's so many people here that says, you know, they call me Carolyn. They, they say, Carolyn, 
what, you know, Nigeria is a problem of its own. You, you can't fix it. Just leave it alone. You're, you're not even over there. That's something selfish for you to think like that. You know, that's something selfish. My family's still there. All of you are my family. You are still there and you're suffering. If you're suffering, I'm in your pain. So I understand this walk is going to be hard. There's days that you're just going to feel like you're giving up. There's going to be your sad moments. But at the end of the day, when God gives his glory, when God puts his glory and his light, and that day when we're rejoicing and we're done and we, we can look back and say, oh, my gosh, we've accomplished it, you know. And I want to encourage people to start speaking. I believe that when you speak, the tongue is a very powerful weapon. So you speak life and death. When you start speaking about Biafra, start speaking about what you're going to see. When Ojuku built up Biafra, there was universities, there were people were happy. Start to think like that. Change your mindset. Start to think like that. The power of a, the tongue is so powerful. And I know Maizu Namdi was saying that people are going to be going into fasting. Fast, 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 because God is going, God is moving in ways that are very, very unknown. I'm silent about a lot of things because... You know, I know things that are happening. Obviously, I cannot say, but I want to encourage people that what we're doing is is working, and we will we were going to get our goal. It's not it's it's not that if there's no such thing as if we will get it, and when we will get it, people there's no tears of sadness. There's only going to be tears of joy. So I want to encourage people to walk in one accord. Hashtag we move and let's get this together. All right, um, which a Colonel NS says, carry on my sister, history will remember you. I'm crying hearing this lady, someone with American passport, <laughs> sacrificing all for us <laughs> to, get, to get to our promised land. But a Fulef who is in Nigeria suffering will open their dirty mouth speaking against the movement. Now I can understand what a Colonel is saying because you know one thing with us, you know there are people, some of our people in the, in the U.S. who are American citizen but they have already forgotten whom they are so this is something about our people when they leave home some of them they forget where they come from all right saying that as well i have a, a fool here who actually said i don't understand is biafra a country on facebook or a country in the world let me educate augustine john bassi he is a fool augustine john bassi it is not my fault that your mother did not teach you <laughs> history or what biafra <laughs> is but there is something they call google augustine that is if you know how to type you can just simply type the word biafra and then of course it will fill your empty skull with the answer you sought all right so please uh Muche, if you can start summarizing what more do you need to tell our people because next week you will be coming back again depending on your schedule i need to create this openings will be uche's corner and we will be talking more and more we need to hear all those things because uh, somebody said something here. I, I just want to um, check this. Uh, I think it's um, yes. He said something. He said, "Ada, you are on point." Many have started preparing position in Biafra land. So pathetic. You know the problem with our people, especially in IPOB. Mm -hmm. People are so drunk with power. You know, they, they, they just want mm -hmm. they want they want power. You know, I'm the co I want to be a coordinator. I want to be this. I want to be that. And this is what I've said to myself. I am happy talking on radio. I don't want to be in power. You know, to lead people is not easy. But you will see some people who don't even know or doesn't have what it takes to lead people. But they want to be there just to destroy things. Just to destroy what we are doing. What advice will you give to all these power hungry fellow comrades who don't know where their specialization lies? I don't know if you do you hear what I say? Do you understand that, Uche? Eke mm -hmm. eke. You know what mm -hmm. it means, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Divisions of mm -hmm. labor. Divisions of labor. That's what I'm talking about. And Uche, I want you to talk me through that. And of course, a bit of an advice to all these power hunger people in our midst who are using their, you know, I mean, incap how do I pull it? They are so incapable of doing what is it that they are fighting for, but they want to be in charge and just to go and destroy things. And of course, before Uche answers that, if you are in um, 
Akokwa and also Idato Nuts. We are live. Radio Biafra is live there, and you can listen to us on 102.1 FM. Akokwa and Idato Nuts. University of Radio Biafra, a university like none other. Uche, please go ahead. Yeah, so let me just let me just kind of state this one sentence, one quote. For those of you who are power hungry that are taking that are taking advantage of people that are truly fighting for freedom, just know that the attorney in me is coming for you. Not only am I the principal secretary to Mazi Namdi Kanu, I love to crack out on corruption. Those Absolutely. of you who know me, I love to crack 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 down on corruption and when i find out and i do my investigation i can guarantee you i give him a full report and do uche so uche, to uche go ahead you have a forensic investigator also here to compliment you i do the investigation i bring it on your table and then you prosecute how's that go ahead exactly, please. exactly. and and that's what it makes my job easier so yes i love it the thing is i we're cracking down on that. So if you're if you're taking advantage of people in the struggle, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you very full and hard because it's it's there's going there's going to be no remorse. No remorse. You cannot continue to do that. People are dying every day. And I know it's not easy and I know and the thing is I I do understand why sad to say I do understand why people are doing the things that they do because when you live in poverty you know, you, you basically tend to think for yourself. So the mind of corruption is more apparent than others. So I understand, but at the same time, too, for the love for your people and where we're trying to go, stop it. If you're power hungry, stop it. If you cannot do your job, step down. That devil that is inside of you, cast it out and pray it out. We do not need you. We don't. And, you know, there's so many, again, I can't say it on radio, there's so many things that I hear day by day. And when you, when you take the time to betray your people, what makes you think that you're going to even get anything when the struggle comes, when we, when we achieve Biafra? Think about that. Because, you know, the way that your mind is corrupt and power hungry as it is, we don't need that. Moving forward, if you have that corrupt mindset, go back to Nigeria. Nigeria is still there, right? Go back to Nigeria. No, but, 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 but by, by the time we are done, Uche, by the time we are done, I don't think Nigeria will still be there. Please go ahead. Maybe they can go to Somalia. No, it's not. It's not. But I'm saying <laughs> they can pack. They can, they can pack and go right now. It's it's still there. They can pack and go. They can pack and go. Um, and I saw obviously I see videos circ circulating with people that are sabotage recently and it's so sad we don't need that and again the people that are power hungry the power the the power that you're that you're taking away from innocent people fighting for freedom in biafra let me tell you you know once god again is in control he will stop you he will stop you before i do and when i find out i'm deaf i i will report it call me the biggest reporter i report Sometimes Mazinami says, you know, you know, you go out of, you go out of, you go out of your role. But I say, listen, I'm playing all hats because <laughs> I'm playing all hats. You know, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, and and when I find out, I'm I'm telling, and, and we'll 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 figure it out. But again, if you're power hungry, stop it, stop it, and and pray for that, pray for that type of characteristic. Pray that out of you. All right, listen to this. You do not need that. Listen to this, Uche. Chukune Nye Neche, she said, position fighters aren't true freedom fighters. A freedom fighter is selfless and doesn't fight for personal gains or interests. Rather fight for the people. My goodness me. What do you make of that? So she said, say the last, say the last. She thing. said Sorry. that, uh, yeah. you know, um, uh, um, a freedom fighter is selfless and doesn't fight for personal gains or interests. Rather, they fight for the mm -hmm. people. Exactly. And that's, ooh, cool. she needs to tweet that to me. That's really good. I, I want to retweet that. Yeah, I'm going to copy, um, copy it and send it to you. Yeah, no, that's really good. That That's true. Because I can guarantee you, like, here in my position... I don't even think of it like, oh, let me do my position well so I can have a position when um, Biafra comes. That's not true. I'm fighting for the people. You know what I mean? And 
even when Biafra comes, like Mazi Namdi, I don't want a position. <laughs> I, I don't want a position at all. My heart is clean. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm more, I'm more concerned with getting our people to the mindset where they need to be on to be able to endure the blessings that they're going to receive in this republic. And people need to think like that. When you're fighting for freedom, if your heart is clean, you're not thinking of what position am I going to get, like she stated. You're thinking of, let, I'm fighting to free people, free people, free people. And whatever God puts in your hand because of your, your labor, that's what he blesses you with. But you, in order for you to, 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 to be blessed or to, to actually reap off of something so great, you have to have a pure heart coming in. It's very, 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 very important. Very, very important for you to have a pure heart doing what we're doing because, again, we're, we're going to be able to achieve what we're doing faster and, you know, we're going to be more on point with one another. So All fighting right. for freedom, we're fighting for freedom, not for titles. So people need to understand that. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my sister Chi Chukune uh, Nyaneche. That is uh, indeed, you know, a nice one. Position fighters are in true freedom fighters. A freedom fighter is selfless and, of course, doesn't fight for personal gains or interests. Rather, they fight for the people. Now, you know, um, somebody once told me, how can you say you are broadcasting on the radio, but you have never met Mazen Nam the Kano before? <laughs> it actually took me a long time before I met our leader. And I had no plan of, you know, I'm like, why do I need to meet him? I'm doing my work. And, and that's what matters. You know, um, and then, you know, good things come f goes for those who wait for it. Good things goes for those who don't even stress about it. I was in Israel broadcasting one morning. And then somebody walk in and say to me, there is somebody who wants to see me. All right, let me see if I still have my dear sister on air. Um, whenever you hear that sound. I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, the per then the person said, there's somebody who wants to see you. And I was so upset. I said to him, can't you see I'm on air and you want me to leave what I'm doing and come and see the person? He said to me, don't, don't shout. There is somebody who wants to see you. If you shout, you won't like your shouting. I'm like, what do you mean? Then uh, somehow I got up and I opened the curtain. Who do I saw? That was when our leader just arrived in Israel. I saw our leader. I don't know what to do. I can't help myself. It was like in the dream. Do you understand? I never planned it. When I was going to Israel, obviously, I never thought in a million years that Mazen Ramdekano will come to Israel. It was a coincidence, a sweet coincidence for that matter. What am I trying to say? It is not about the position. I'm not interested. Because if you make me a leader here, trust me, uh, you will hear that I, I, I probably will, will kick some people in, <laughs> in the meeting. I cannot do it. It's not my calling. My calling is to sit here on air and shout and scream so that the world can hear my voice. You need to identify your strong points. Don't go chasing things yes. that, is not, that is not in your league. Because why am I saying that? You are going to destroy what we are doing. We are not here to fight. We are not here for cabals. We are not here to groupies. No, we are here to restore Biafra. It's as simple as that. So, wow. Uche, can I get your party <laughs> shot as we are trying to, you know, round up? I need to get your pa party shot, of course, holistically. Where are we going from here? What do we need to do in order to assist our leader? Because trust me when I tell you, our leader need, he needs so much help. All the help he can get, he cannot do this alone. Please go ahead. I think the first thing that comes to mind when you ask that question is loyalty. Because when you have loyalty, nothing can break you. Loyalty is what everybody in this struggle can at least provide. And that's not asking for too much. It's just be loyal to what we're doing, right? And then another thing that you said was identifying something that you're good at. So some people here that are, I'm, 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 I'm reading the, the comments on the live. If you're good in radio, reach out. If you say, oh, I have, I'm good in IT, reach out to me. Reach out because at the end of the day, we're not building a house. We're building a republic. So everybody that's good in something, you know, you have to start thinking and talking in the way that Biafra is here. It is here. But start putting yourself and thinking, what am I good at now? Because it's going to help us. So I think 
not I think, but everybody should be on that same mindset, right? So for me, I don't know what I'm good at. Maybe talk. I don't know what I'm good at. Yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, you, you, I, 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 <laughs> you, you are an attorney, of course. You know, attorney is good at looking for troubles. That's exactly what you're good at. <laughs> I do. I do. I do like looking for troubles, and I like. I hate injustice. One thing about me is I hate injustice. If I smell it, if I see it, I'm calling it out. So, um, all right. You know, I will continue to do that. All right. So, yeah. I have this. I have this suggestion. Somebody made a suggestion here, and I want to throw it out there, and I want to hear what you think about it. But before I tell you that, I have Jonathan E. Uche. He said, Uche. Okay, he is also Uche. What a coincidence. Uche, I love your passion for Biafra restoration. Please keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, history will forever remember you. You are a beautiful daughter of Biafra, and we, the lovers of freedom, love you so much. Oh, that's so sweet. All right. So, now, here is this. Anayo Alamoke made a suggestion, and I want to hear what you think about it. He said, my view in Biafra restoration at the moment is if 20 million Biafrans living in abroad can provide IPOB leadership with $1,000 each, starting from, from me, within a month to sustain ESN in every look, looks and cronies of Biafra land, Biafra land actively, Believe me, the next month, Biafra will be officially declared. What's your take on that? I do kind of, um, and I, I'm assuming that he's in the U.S., right? Is he in the U.S.? I'm not sure where he is. I'm not sure where he is based. But um, Mazi Nambi Kano, and, and, and when he was, you know, when I spoke with him, and when I speak with him, even when he's on the radio, he always says something. He says, um, he says, the U.S., the United States, people in the United States is going to give us Biafra. The financial support obviously is here, right? Um, I do believe that if there's more Igbo people that will rise up and provide that financial support, we won't even be, I mean, it, it's going to help greatly. Would I say that it's going to fully, fully give us um, Biafra very quickly? I, I don't know, but I do believe that it's going to accelerate what we're trying to do so yes those of you and, and i know people are still sleeping because it's early 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 here for us but when this recording goes on and, and people will listen those of you who are in the united states are sitting so comfortably it's time to, to to spend that money because we need support very simple we need the support and the thing about it is it's going to be very sad when biafra is here then you'll start seeing the people in the united states come and say oh let me come build this. Let me come build this. Oh, I want this. I want that. Where were you when people were dying? And I tell you, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. I tell you, we're gonna kick them back to where they come from. It's as simple as that. Please go ahead. Exactly. Where were you? Where Where were you at the time when 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 um people were throwing rocks at the struggle and saying, "Oh, IPOB is a terrorist." Stop all that nonsense, right? If we were a terrorist, I wouldn't be able to talk to Congress and people here in the United States. They would not take me serious. When I talk to people, they know who I am. You could Google and see what organization I am a part of. United States does not declare IPOB as a terrorist organization, so therefore it is not a terrorist organization. So Igbo people in the diaspora, they need to wake up, not only wake up, but open up your wallet and contribute. You know what I mean? Because this is not a fight of, okay, ESN is fighting, but who is supporting ESN? There's only so many, I mean, Texas, yes, big ups for Texas. We are the biggest IPOB chapter, but Texas has a lot of Biafrans. And when you Google Biafrans in the United States, they're doing very well. Don't forget where you came from. We're not accepted here in the United States. Let's be real. We are second class citizens in the United States. I am born in the United States. I am born in the, I, I was born in the United States and I'm still a second class citizen in this country. My first class citizen of where I belong is Biafra. Absolutely. And people need to have that mindset, you know, have that same mindset. I fight for Black Lives Matter here. Yes, I do. Because the injustice here for black people in America is a whole nother story and that's a whole nother ball game. But where, do, where does black people come from? Ask yourself that question. So if you're fighting for Black Lives Matter and you're not fighting for Biafrans, then that's, you're contradicting yourself. All right. I want people to understand something. There is black people. There is Biafran. 
What do I mean by that? Because we are different. We are peculiar. We are, I don't even know how to start to quantify who we are. So Biafra life matters. I think that's what we should actually hashtag on. All right. Um, Uche, have you had your breakfast this morning yet? No, I'm going after this. I'm going back to sleep. All right, Uche, going. you don't you don't need to stress yourself or bother yourself about having breakfast because this is breakfast with Mazi Kechukwanoa, and it is the biggest hey. breakfast on the continent. A breakfast, <laughs> I know, I'm so like cool. none I'm other. So cool. <laughs> this is breakfast this with Mazi Kechukwanoa on the people of the East. Of the East. Interaction. All right, it is interactive on the University of Radio Biafra, which I would have loved to let you go, but I have, you know, this morning I have so many intelligent listeners. Honestly, I can't just ignore them. Their writing is so, is so powerful. I just can't ignore it. Now, somebody said something. Let me first, before I tell you that one, because... Uh, um, what I'm going to read out now that this uh, brother said is actually the solution to our problem. But before that, let me see what Angela Onyeka Charles, she said, here in Africa, people see position as a means of acquiring power and wealth and not to save their people. So here, it is a personal gain. But from what I see, Mazen Nambekano doing, he is totally different. I know that Biafra will be different if he remains the leader. Oh, my goodness me. What's your take on that, Uche? Say that last thing. He said if he wants to what? He wants Mazen Lamdekano to remain the leader when Biafra comes, meaning he wants him to be the first prime yeah. minister of Biafra. But, of course, our leader has turned that down. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Yeah, he has. And, and when I first came, that's how I knew, because when I first came into the struggle, you know, you, you would think that people are very power hungry. I did not know. I had to do my research. When you are around Mazi Namdekanu, all he, he sleeps, eats, thinks, sweats, be after. I can get, I can tell you that wholeheartedly. Like I said, he's not human. And when I see him, when you see him day by day in person and just... It's kind. I, I kind of get sad. I'm like, you know what? Once this comes, he can be free. It's like God puts something in your heart, and you cannot do anything else until this is accomplished, and then He will set you free. So that's the same thing for him. He's fighting for this, but it, it's it, it's stressful. It's very very stressful. He's been through so much. He lost two of his parents, you know, and they just had their um, memorial, but. Just all of the stuff that he's witnessed, that's, that's not normal for one man to, to happen and to, to hold. So once Biafra is restored, he can finally rest and say, okay, God, I've done what you've asked me to do. Now all we have to do is just build from there. You know, he's, again, he's giving us the platform. Now it is our time to come in and, and build it to, to the way that we see fit, to the way that people are going to be able to live somewhere where they're going to be free. So I, I definitely agree with him that, yeah, because when, you, when you're a minister or if you're a president, that's a job within itself. I mean, my little title is a job within itself, and it takes a lot of time, you know. So just imagine, you know, when, when Biafra comes, you know, for you to be ruling a whole republic. I mean, it's, that's too much. And that's how you know he's very humbled, because somebody that is not him will, will be first to say, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna be, you know, I, I got us this far, I'm going to run it. That's how humble he is. So those of you who are talking the mess that you do on a daily and, and, and saying all this stuff about him, you know, it, his work speaks for himself. He's very, 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 very humble. So I definitely um, agree with him that, yeah, he, should, he shouldn't have a position. He should rest. You know, if people love him as much as they do, allow him to rest once, once we get Biafra. Absolutely. All right. Now, the person that, you know, suggested about people in diaspora contributing $1,000, you ask where is he? He is in China. That's what he has responded to me. All right. We must continue. And I still have uh, something. Uh, uh, Kennel NSA, this broadcast this morning is a blood tonic in my vein. You know, <laughs> hope is it's hope for the hopeless. Please, if I can get this on audio, I will be very happy. And I promise I will do my best to get it shared and now listen to this one this this is the the real crops of the day this is this has made my day 
Hosanna Ziko Ihejirika said something which I listened to this and listened very attentively. He said, if it's convenient for you, then it's not a sacrifice. My goodness me. If it's convenient for you, then it's not a sacrifice. People want to be a coordinator. They want to be this and that in the family. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to sacrifice. They don't want it to cost them anything. And Nan Hosanna is saying to you, if it's convenient for you, if you are doing this struggle and you are losing nothing, you are not losing time, you are not losing money, you are not losing sleep, trust me when I tell you, then it's not a sacrifice. Which is just like you said, Every time our leader finishes his broadcast, I sleep very late. I stay up after midnight because I have to do a lot of back end work in order to get the sound cloud, the you know, the extract and what have you out there, you know, beside the radio that I do. And there are many other people. I know my uh, national coordinator, Mazi Chidebere Ubiuku, he doesn't sleep. He will send you news around 3 a.m., 2 a.m. I ask him, why are you waking up so? He said, no, that's when I get news around 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 1 a.m. So if it doesn't cost you anything, if it becomes so comfortable for you, if freedom fighting becomes comfortable for you, you are in the wrong place. You need to get out. You need to get out. You need people to tell you stuff. Exactly. You need people to insult you. You need people to call your name. When you go to your town people's meeting, you need them to tell you nonsense. You need them to call you, hey, Basin Lambeki. So they call me Lambekano. That's what they call me. And I know they're trying to be very funny. You know what I'm saying? So it has to cost you something. Then you know you are at the right place and you are doing the right thing. Which What's your take on this? If it's convenient for you, then it ends no sacrifice please go ahead exactly exactly because like i like i said um the like i said before coming into the struggle you, you, it has to make you uncomfortable you cannot sit here and be comfortable so just as what you said which i need to tweet that that that's good just as what you said all right oh he oh, he said if it's convenient for you then it's not sacrifice exactly if it's coming in for you, it's not. It's, it's, if it's convenient for you, it's not a sacrifice because, again, this is not an easy thing. You know, you have to get out of your comfort. You have to get out of your com comfortable zone. You know, and you have. There's so many things that you have to sacrifice. You know, there's so many things that you have to sacrifice. I am very private. You know, so I have to sacrifice my 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 um my privacy. You know, when I put myself out there. But I told myself if I'm going to put myself out there, I, there's Anything that I put my hands on to it, and you can bet me, any time that I put my hands on to something or any time that I feel that I want to achieve something, it happens. It happens because, number one, God is behind me. When God is behind me and God is behind you wholeheartedly, the whole lane of what you're trying to do is clear. So people need to understand that, you know. It's, going, it, it's, 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 it's an inconvenience. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough, but... That is what you sacrifice. You have to sacrifice something in order to accomplish something All right. in this dynamic, you know, in this way. All right. Uh, Henry Ike MF4 says, attorneys looks for trouble. While our leader, that's why our, why our leader said, whenever there is no trouble, he creates, <laughs> he creates one. Uche, did you hear that? That's a confirmation when you are looking for your, you know, uh, expertise. And now uh, Henry is telling you that attorneys looks for trouble. So Uche, go out there and look for we trouble. <laughs> we do, we do, we do, we do. And one thing too, I just want to say something before we uh, wrap up, because I, I get on Twitter. I had posted something that what is I, I can't really pronounce his name, but Swor um, Swaro. What is his name? I somebody. Okay, if you look at my last tweet, he he has something. Swore, I, I can't pronounce his name, but um, he has the Buhari must go hashtag. And somebody says, somebody said this is rubbish. I'm not interested in this political. Um, I guess he's not interested in what I'm saying or or why am I hashtagging that? Anything that I put on Twitter, know that there's a reason behind it. Don't ask questions. Just just retweet. That's all I'm asking you. Just please support and just retweet. Okay, there is. I don't have to state every. I don't have to state a reason why I do certain things Absolutely. every time. Just know that everything is strategic. So yeah. 
Absolutely. So, Uche, what Chineke Chris said, I just feel like crying now for, for the sacrifice for the restoration of Biafra. And he said, Uche, you even quit your job. May Elohim Chukukabiama bless you abundantly, our sister Uche. Now, and from this moment on, my love for you increases. Oh, Uche, you just got an admirer, a secret admirer for that matter. I know. <laughs> I saw his comment. I actually responded. That was so sweet. Automatically, that's, my dear. That's real. <laughs> All right. So many people are loving our sister. And of course, it's not only Machineke Chris. But what I can tell you is there will be a vetting system. We will have to vet every application. And of course, only the right candidate will go through. <laughs> All right. Which we need to summarize. I can tell you there is so much to talk here. There is so much coming through. Uh, uh, let me just get this. Okay. Are you still there, Uche? Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. All right. Jonathan. I can hear you. Uh, Jonathan said, imagine someone with American passport still, you know, still so passionate about Biafra restoration. Please, my sister, never allow Nigerian government to buy you over because I know they will try as usual. Blessed is the womb that gave birth to you. My God. What do you make of that? Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> That is so sweet. That is so sweet. I'm, I'm just a human. <laughs> I'm a Biafra and I'm, I'm a human just like everyone else but um you know again my this struggle everybody's pain that has to endure that's currently in biafra that's going through so many tears i'm with you all you know i'm not there physically but i'm with you all and that is why you have to make a sacrifice you know i quit my job i started my own firm and in order for me to do that is because i i want you all to have freedom and that's the only go that that is the only go it's so hard um it's, it's kind of so hard. People question me all the time. They say, you know, what, why are you doing this? It's because this is how God created me. I hate injustice. I hate, hate, hate injustice. And one thing I know that everything in life is, everything you do in life is a purpose. If you're just living in life, you're just taking up space. Do something that's meaningful. Do something that's going to help people, um, you know, obtain something that they never thought they would have. So, yes, that's why, I, that's my purpose, and, I, and I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to continue. All right. Now, let's close with this. I'm going to ask you this question, of course, coming from one of the listeners, and then I will get your party shot, and I will let you go, Uche. Of course, to, next week uh, is still another time. All right. Uh, Ralphson Ndikum asked a question, and I want you to understand the reason why they're asking this question, because black people we are one hell of a species on this planet earth you know in europe overseas somebody can do something for charity somebody can do something you know with open hearts now about from this place where we come from some of our people don't know that you can actually do something for free some don't know that but some has beginning to know and understand because of our leader so rafson dikum asked a question dear uche my question to you is this if the zoo government offer you 100 million dollars okay <laughs> will you abandon nam the and an ipob global family <laughs> <laughs> let me okay <laughs> that's, that, that's, so that's, a, that's a lot of money that's a lot of money 100 million dollars <laughs> oh 100 million dollars uh no i would the thing about me is money never has ever been something that I've ever ran after, you know, if you have a pure heart, God is going to bless you. Right. So although I quit, let me just kind of actually be a little bit more clear. Although I quit my job, I'm actually doing much better than what I was doing working for somebody. And I do believe that God is still blessing me in the way that he's blessing me because I'm doing what he wants me to do. So again, if you have a pure heart, regardless, Money will come. It depends on how you use it. If you know me and people that are in this chat room, they know that I like to give. I definitely like to give because if I have and I'm blessed with it, I give. There's no amount of money that I would that you can offer me to betray my people. And again, I do believe in spirits, right? There's so many over how many of our ancestors died for this cause. What makes you think that I want to betray them? 
okay? And stop comparing my name to, to certain people that were in the struggle before that they betrayed my name. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Okay? It's never going to happen. I'm a different type of breed. Absolutely. Okay? I, I don't need that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear sister. And of course, I must tell you, it is indeed, uh, I don't know how to say it, but be honest with you, having you on this show, you know, makes a hell lot of sense because of your way of reasoning. You, you really, really understand our people very well. And of course, from what you are saying, I must tell you, you know, it actually uh, depicts your, you know, in-depth knowledge of Biafran people and the struggle. And I just pray that Elohim will continue to strengthen you. You know, it's not an easy task at all. You know, being an attorney is quite a hell of a job. And combining it with freedom fighting, you can understand what I'm talking about. It is only Elohim, the same God that is giving our leader the strength and energy to do what he's doing today. He will also give you the same energy because if you are working with Mazen Nam Dekano, you better pull up your socks. I've been there. And I know I what I'm talking about. He is not just anyhow would do man. He won it and he won the best. He doesn't settle for less. He gives you a task that you know nothing about. A task that you've never done before in your life. And he expects you to do it perfectly well. <laughs> you know, he will, know. he will call me and say to me, Ike Chuku, I want you to do one, two, three. And I'm like, but I don't know how to do it. You see, Kechuku, stop talking. The time is going. I want it by so, so time. And then he drops the phone. And then I, I'm like, what? how am I going to do this? So what I do, instead of me complaining, I go on doing research. Go on Google and whatever. Before the end of the day, I will deliver. And I've learned so much from that being thrown you know in the middle and at the end of the day i've learned most of the things i've learned now is because of the way he has pushed me even to the edge that i have to learn by force so uche the same thing is applicable to you and i expect you to continue you know when you're working you're working for mazen the can you're working for beer from people and you're working for yourself and your future and your generation because at the end of the day when all the dust sets our story will be told and I don't want anybody's name to be missing in the storybook. Can I have your parent shot before I let you go? Wow. I mean, <laughs> you're so, your words are so powerful. I, I don't even know how to even Thank you very much. after that. <laughs> but um, I guess I, it's working for a Mazinamikano, it's probably a hard, it's probably more hard, harder working for him than being an attorney, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, one thing I know is you have to have tough skin and you have to stay focused. You have to stay focused. So um, if I fell in my position, I fell, not only do I fail, but I, I fell for everyone. And there has been time after time, so many people that have come before me that have failed. And I can tell you right now, wholeheartedly, you can quote me on this day, you can quote me on this time, that, that will never be me. That will never be me. So um, I want to encourage you as well to continue to do good and continue to do the good things that you're doing and others to continue to do good and continue to do um, what you're doing, rather if it's online, if it's on ground or where, wherever. But we all need to continue to work as hard as we're doing and just continue to move forward. All right, that's beautiful. Uche, let's do this. Give me your Twitter account. I need to put it out there. People want to know what is your Twitter account. Please go ahead. Okay, so my Twitter is, you can find me on Carolyn Kimberly. That's my American middle name, but it's C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, and then Kimberly is K-I-M-B-R-L-Y. Or you can just type in, if you go to my, okay. All right, go, listen, I, Kimberly, Kimberly, yeah. is it B-E-R or just B-R? No, for Twitter purposes, it's B R L Y. Why? All right, okay. So it's at Caroline. It's yeah. at Caroline Kimberly. Is that it for Twitter? Yes, yes. Or you can just type in Uchenna, uh, Carolyn Uchenna for it It'll come up. All right, just one second for me. And then, uh, of course, uh, if we talk in Facebook here, what is your? How do we find you on Facebook again, please? For those who don't know. It's Carolyn Uchenna Okarafor. All right, Carolyn Uchenna Okarafor. All right, people, I'm going to post this, of course, so that you can 
Okorafo. There we go. So you can follow our sister on Twitter. Very, very important because if you want to know what is going on, if you want to know what is happening, of course, you will get the latest information. Remember, she is the PA to our leader. So that means that she gets some of the news before some of us do. And of course, if you follow her, you will be getting all the information you need. Uche, it's been a pleasure having you once again this morning. And please, please, next week, don't tell me you are busy because you're going to be back here again live and direct so that we can start preaching this gospel. Yes. And in the spirit of giving, those of you who are coming on next week, I'm going to be giving some stuff away. So stay tuned. I was going to do it today, but we didn't plan it well. So of course, it's next fine. Week, We'll do All right, did you hear that? Uche will be giving away some stuff next week in the spirit of giving. My goodness me, this roof has been on fire for the past half an hour, 45 minutes. And of course, we don't need no water because this is freedom fighting, for goodness sake. Thank you very much, Uche, and God bless you. Thank you. All right.